He has enormous pecs, especially his upper pecs. If you look at Superman in the comics, you're like, I'm a fucking benching at least 550 for reps on the incline. What the fuck? And then you forget that he's Kryptonian, that it's like 550 septillion tons or some shit like that. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here from Renaissance Periodization. And in my previous several videos, several dozen now, I've been known to do a bit of critiquing of Hollywood training. And it's not all bad. There's just a bit of crap in there every now and again. And so sometimes when I critique the videos, oh, this is really good. And sometimes I'm like, oh, these folks could be doing better. And a lot of folks have asked, well, if we could be doing better, why don't you make some workouts that make us look more like folks in the movies? And since the average actor or actress doesn't really look any different than a normal person, we're going to relegate ourselves to trying to look like superhero movie actors and actresses, or really just fuck it, just go straight to the source. We're going to turn you into a literal superhero so that you can be like Homelander and save the day and massacre tons of people when the government just covers it up. The Boys on Amazon, by the way, is a fucking sweet show. I love that show. I only hope that full immersion of virtual reality comes soon enough before I croak so that I can go in there with Dragon Ball Z powers and beat the living shit out of Homelander with my own two hands. Fuck, what are we talking about? Oh, that's right. So we've already done one of these videos and you can search for it if you like, or maybe Scott or somebody will link it. We did Thor, how to look like Thor the Viking God. But this time we're switching universes, pushing Marvel aside, getting into DC, and we are gonna try to get you, that's right, you, to look like Superman. Dun, da, 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 da. Is that a bird or a plane, or can we shoot that down with anti-aircraft artillery? Nope, it's Superman, and sure as shit can't shoot him down with conventional weapons. However, what we can promise you if you do the plan that I'm about to, in detail, describe to you is you can look marginally more like Superman than you do now. And that's dope as hell, because Superman was a fine looking man mm -mm -mm, in almost every rendition. And there are a few different renditions. So what is it the look that we're actually gonna be shooting for? Because there's a couple different eras of Superman. 1930 Superman could pass for a reporter when he was in a suit, you know, just like regular guy. And like that's all they kind of, that was all the imagination stretched out in the 1930s. And so uh, we're not we're not going for that. We can do a little bit better. Uh, modern Superman, and especially in the modern Justice League versions on the cartoons, motherfucker, you know what I'm saying, couldn't pass a drug test somebody else took for him. So holy shit, and we're trying to get you looking like that, but what we can do is make some of your muscles bigger than others. I'll talk about which ones in a second, but really the reason that we all want to look like Superman, it just comes down to just one name, and that's Lois Lane. Why do you think Superman got all these superpowers? Is it to save the Earth? Yes. What is the purpose of saving the Earth? Two factor. One, so that one particular citizen of the Earth, Lois Lane, can also be saved. And two, so as to impress Lois Lane and see, bitch, I saved the whole Earth. Don't you think that entitles me to hmm, a little bit of R&R? &R? Damn, Lois Lane must be fine as hell. If you're Superman, you can sort of get it wherever you want. And uh, Lois Lane's the one that, uh, that he wants. So do you want to get your own Lois Lane? Uh, consensually, of course. Uh, then yes, then yes, then you want to look like Superman. Let's cut to the chase about what the hell that even means. To me, just to me, there are different interpretations about this. Feel free to write your own workout in the RPI Bridge for you. <laughs> Superman's physique, especially as I most commonly remember it from the Justice League cartoons of the late 90s, early 2000s, is the ultimate triangle shape, which is to say, he has enormous pecs, especially his upper pecs. If you look at Superman in the comics, you're like, I'm a fucking benching at least 550 for reps on the incline. What the fuck? And then you forget that he's Kryptonian, that it's like 550 septillion tons or some shit like that. He also has enormo popping side delts. The cape barely fits on this motherfucker. The delts are out to here, so pecs are out to there. Delts are out to there. And the back, he's not known for like lower back thickness or some shit. Mostly villains are known for that. I guess me. He's known for them sweeping lats, that crazy V taper. Huge upper back, super wide lats. That to me, those three muscles, 
pecs, specifically upper pecs, or more upper pecs than not, side delts, and lats slash upper back is where Superman really shines. And if you have muscles that are bigger, those muscles on your body than usual, you will look more Superman-esque. And that one girl at your work that sort of looks like Lois Lane that you're sort of too not confident enough to talk to, when you get those bigger muscles, she may be like, Frank, right? And you're like, yes, that's correct. And also Frank Wright was a, 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 a great famous person in his own right. And she's like, what? You're like, never mind, I'll never get laid. She's like, what? Like, I, just go somewhere else. But after you finish the plan, you can be like, hey, what's up, Lois Lane? And she's like, darling, and she'll fall into your arms. You'll grab her, you'll fly away. In any case, getting a superhero physique takes some pretty serious work. You can condense the plan I'll give you down to a three-day plan if you want, but it's gonna be a five-day plan. Five days, real deal, to get you started, get you looking like Superman. Three, two, one, workout. What's the plan? Day one, day three, and day five of this plan are gonna be focused on chest, delts, and back, but not in that order every time. Superman has an equally impressive chest and delts and upper back, so we want all of those to get their just desserts. And if you train back every single time last, you're not nearly as energized, the stimulus for back isn't as high, the fatigue is very high going into the training, and thus the total amount of back muscle growth you can do if you always train back last is just no bueno. So it's gonna throw off your physique if you do this. So what we did here is, on day one, you go chest, then delts, then back. On day three, you do back, then chest, then delts. And on day five, you do delts, then back, then chest. Every single one of those muscles gets their time in the sun to be first in line, second in line, and third in line. That also, because it doesn't cook your chest too much during the plan or overcook your back or overcook your delts, is a really good fatigue management throughout the week, such that at the end of this week and the beginning of the current week, everything chest and back and delts feels healed and strong and ready to go. So day one is two exercises for chest. I have them sampled here. You can take a look at them. I'm not going to just read exercises off to you. Feel free to pause the fucking video if you want. Then we have two exercises for the delts and just one exercise for the back at the end. Because when something is dead last, you're out of energy anyway, it would be the fifth exercise of the day at that point. Fuck that. Just one exercise. Keep the back cooking a little bit. For all of these, I want you to start at something like two sets per exercise and oh, around 10 to 15 reps on all the lifts. That, that rep range is really just up to you, but 10 to 15 is how I like this program to look. I'm not putting my foot down really hard on that. It's dealer's choice. Now, I'm gonna talk about day three and then day five and then come back around to day two and four. You'll see that there's a symmetry there. Day three, you're gonna start with back. Two back movements. Now, the exercises, if you wanna pause and take a look at them that I've selected, absolutely do emphasize the width component, which is gained more through vertical pulling than through rowing. If you wanna look like Bane, you do a lot of rows. If you wanna look like Superman, you do a lot of vertical pulling. So here, for example, I have overhand pull-ups and overhand assisted pull-ups as the first two exercises and the only two exercises for the back that day. So we're emphasizing that width. There's an incline movement in most of these days to emphasize that upper pec, so on and so forth. So we have two back movements on that day three, we have two chest movements, and then we have just one shoulder movement. Some cable upright rows to finish off the deal, same rep range, et cetera. Now, here's the caveat. For pull-ups, you might not be able to do 10 to 15 reps of pull-ups, especially if they're strict, especially on second, third, and fourth sets. So just do as many strict pull-ups as you can, whatever shy of failure that you need to, and then that'll take care of the rest. But for assisted pull-ups and stuff, 10 to 15 reps is probably a good range. You can go higher and lower if you like, dealer's choice. Then day five, so day one, day three, day five, day five is that last day of focus on those Superman muscles. And we start with two delt exercises. We go into two back exercises and then just one chest exercise at the end, some deficit pushups to cook everything. And here on the first two days of the plan, or rather the day one and day three, we're going a little heavier, 10 to 15 reps. On this last day, just for a little bit of variation, because that's been shown in the literature to potentially cause some more muscle growth in the short term, we're gonna do mostly sets of 15 to 20. So this is like maybe a Friday in your program. It's a bit more of a high rep day, still intense, just a little bit lighter and a few more reps. Now, days two and four are for training the rest of your body just at maintenance mode. We don't, Superman, I'm sorry, I love huge legs, but Superman just doesn't have big legs. And if you ever look at his calves in a lot of the comics, you're like, bro, even if his calves are jacked, his quads are like, bro. And he's not known for big glutes. That'd be kind of weird. Like Superman saves you and you're like, damn, dad ass. I mean, it's not so weird. Lois Lane sure shit knows a lot about that. Don't you, Lois? I wonder if she's watching this. 
and Superman might beat me up, speaking ill of his girl. Day two is for legs and arms. Now, does Superman have big arms? Yeah, he's Superman, but not compared to his chest, his delts, and his back. And so here you will train arms and your arms get a lot of work from pulling and pushing for chest. Notice most of the exercises I put in there for chest and for back are compound movements that involve the forearm flexors, the biceps, and involve the triceps significantly. So we don't need to do a whole lot of arm training for our arms even to grow quite a bit in this program, but not grow as much as the chest and the delts and the back because look like Superman means look like Superman. If you want to look just like a jacked person, then go download the RP Hypertrophy app and just pick any of the templates that you see and they're all designed to maximally get you jacked as much as possible. So day two is going to be legs and arms, something like high bar squats, high bar good mornings, takes care of the essentially the whole lower body. Fuck calves. Nobody cares about calves. Get at me in the comments. And I care about calves. But Superman sure shit doesn't. And then dumbbell skull crushers and dumbbell two arm standing curls. You'll notice something here that the high bar squat and the high bar good morning use the same implement, same setup, same barbell. You have to warm up very little from one to the other. You're already there. You're already going to get it kicking. We want most of our effort in this program spent on days one, three, and five. And so days two and four are going to be intentionally simpler. And if you can use the same implement and not walk around the gym to find and remember for some other completely different machine, it saves you cognitive bandwidth and fatigue. So you can really just breeze through that day, get to that day three and really crush it. So that day two ends with dumbbell skull crushers and dumbbell two arm standing curls, which means you can use the dumbbells for skull crushers. After you've done a few sets, you just start doing the standing curls. You can warm up a little bit. You don't even have to change positions. It's going to save you a lot of time. Same rep range here, start with two sets and 10 to 15 reps on all lifts or an average of 10 to 15 reps, dealer's choice. That it finishes off day two. And then day four is not legs and arms, it's arms and legs. We're flipping the order. So we start with cable curls, then we go to cable pushdowns, that's biceps, triceps, then lying leg curls, and then leg presses. Again, you can switch all these exercises out for whatever that you want them, but very, very straightforward. It's not a ton of work. It's just to make sure that your arms and legs are still at least as muscular as they were when you began the plan so that as your chest and delts and back grow, you're still looking awesome in the other muscle groups. And then you just look extra awesome, extra like Superman, and you get extra Lois Lane attention. Yeah. Yeah, they have kind of a weird romance. Not very like Me Too because it's, it's, it's office shit. You know, like what, what are the ethics of that? But like, hey, Scott, does Lois Lane know that Clark Kent is Superman? I think at some point she does. She finds out. She finds out. All right. Fuck around and find out. Yeah. How come you don't, Scott, the video guy? Is it because you realize that with your genetics, you were never going to be Superman-like and you chose other heroes like Harvey Weinstein? I was like the, the scarecrow guy from the Batman. You're a piece of shit, Scott. <laughs> he was cool, though. Make people trip balls? That's a sweet. Bro, I'd be charging if I was him. That's the eighty dollars. You think you know how, how much money I gotta spend to make this industrial acid? You dumb motherfucker! It's all bad trips, but you know, bad trips are the most therapeutic, and that's actually probably true. Don't go out there and start having bad trips. In any case, that's how the plan's designed. But how do you progress week to week to week? That's an important detail. I'm gonna hook you up with right now. You start at sort of like three reps in reserve shy of failure in the first week with all the lifts. And then the progression is twofold. For Tuesday, Thursday, or the day two and day four, you're going to do like very simple progression. You just add five pounds to each lift most weeks or add a rep to each lift most weeks, and you never change the sets. It's just going to be two sets of everything the entire time by design just to get you to maintain what you have. We don't want to increase your leg and arm size a ton on this program because that would be for a different program, different look. And it saves a bunch of fatigue from being generated to give us a ton of fatigue that we can generate and still recover in the ultra important days one, three, and five, aka Monday, Wednesday, Friday, if you like to train like that. And that really lets us pound the chest, the delts, and the back to look more like Superman. So for those days, day one, Day three, day five, AKA potentially Monday, Wednesday, Friday, absolutely each week, you wanna put maybe five pounds on the bar and or add one rep to keep things progressively more difficult, just gently. And if the exercise wasn't super challenging last time, and if the target muscle wasn't really sore in the next training session, it wasn't really tired and you feel like "Ah, I could be doing more, add a set in the next week that you do that exercise. And if you got really, really beat up and really fucked up and you're super sore, take a set away. But if everything is just right, you're healing just before your workouts. And if you did a little bit more, a little bit less, it would throw things off, change nothing. That's auto-regulation. Now, 
the RPI hypertrophy app, which you do not have to buy to use this program. You can use this program just by yourself. You can put it in Excel or whatever other fitness app you like to use. That's totally cool. In the RPI hypertrophy app, the auto-regulation of how many sets you do week to week is handled entirely for you by the app's algorithms. All you have to do is answer like, how tired am I? How sore am I? Uh, and a couple other questions are super easy. They ask you after every single exercise that you do, just a few questions. And if you fill those out, the next week automatically gets regulated to whatever volume the app is coded to reflect for you to get you to exactly or as close as possible, training exactly as hard as you need to barely recover, but still progress as much as possible. That's what we want. If you want to do it by yourself, no big deal at all. Now, you do that progression for long enough, adding five pounds and adding a rep here and there and increasing some of the sets and then eventually flatlining and just crushing out a ton of volume, you're going to get really tired. You're going to start to underperform and it's going to be pointless for you to keep coming back into the gym. So once every four to eight weeks, depending on when you stop getting stronger and feel really fatigued, you take a deload week, which my recommendation for a real simple approach is just go to the gym only twice that week, not five times a day. Just go Monday and go Thursday, reduce the weights, sets, and reps by half. Now, if you do the RPI hypertrophy app, it's going to plan the deload for you. You don't have to write anything down. No notes required. But if you do this, it's a real simple way to get it all done. And you spend so little time in the gym that week that you conserve all the muscle you built, but you eliminate all of your fatigue and then you can crush this program out after. How long should you do this program for? I would say give it eight to 16 weeks of really diligent programming and, and good nutrition and good execution. And then you'll start to see some serious changes, more Superman-esque in your body. And then you see how you look. You can always just repeat the program again by changing a couple things. One is keeping the exercises that you liked. If pull-ups are going well, don't change them. Next time you set up your next mesocycle, keep the pull-ups. Or you can switch to analog exercises, variants of certain exercises that uh, got a little stale on you. Let's say cable rows are kind of getting annoying and you're not having so much fun with them anymore, but you try a machine row at your gym and it feels awesome for your back. Switch out cable rows, go to machine rows, for example, and then go on your merry way. And then you can just hit that plan again and look even more and even more and even more like Superman progressively. Now, if you want to switch the script and go do some powerlifting training or, you know, train to look like Thor and use our Thor program or some other superhero or something else entirely, you can always back off and do it. And, you know, you'll look a little bit more like Superman, maybe even for the rest of your life. A lot of, a lot of muscle gain is sort of semi-permanent. And then maybe you'll have just a little bit of that, a bit of that Krypton in you. No, wait, no, no. Krypton is uh, poisonous, right? Kryp Kryptonium. Fuck if I know anything about comics. In any case, can you do this all by yourself off an Excel sheet or your notepad? Absolutely. I'm never going to push a single product on you guys that you don't want to buy. But legit, the only reason we manufacture these apps at RP, the only reason we make them is to try to help you and also to try to get frivolously rich. But even that second point doesn't really apply to me anymore because I'm so rich, I actually have to burn physical cash in a gigantic urn in my house so that I don't get taxed extra on the extra weight the money takes up on planet Earth. That's the kind of fucking rich I'm talking about. I don't need the money anymore. I never really did. I was born insanely wealthy already. Uh, more like, um, what was his name? Batman, I except my parents never croaked. They're just Jewish and um, they really care about me and text me and call me all the time. All the fucking time. Anyway, downloading the RPI Hypertrophy app can take care of all of your programming and progression needs. It really does save an unbelievable amount of time. It organizes everything. And here's the really great news. This Superman workout and the Thor workout we already put up and no doubt to many future workouts in the superhero theme are already in as templates in the app. You don't have to build shit. You get the app, you download it, you click save to home screen. The app pops up as a real app on your phone. You click on that motherfucker, you set up all your shit. And by that, I mean like, Hey, what's your email? Blah, blah, blah. How much do you want to pay us? Click. And as soon as it goes through and opens up the app, you go to templates, you go and hit Superman template or Superman workout or whatever the fuck it's called, Superman workout. And you can hit Thor workout if you want. You click it and boom, it loads right away, even down to the very exercises that we've included. Do you have to use those exercises? Nope. You can change them right away. You can change them later. It's all yours. And for less than a dollar a day, that's pretty fucking sweet. Link in the description to sign up for that shit. Um, and that'll be cool. Now, what about diet? Yes, if you use the RP Diet Coach app, you can get a ton of help. But the RP Diet Coach app is a really blank slate. You decide what you want to do, and then it honors that decision. So what should you do? You have two options generally. If you're a bit on the fatter than you like side, then you can do uh, 8 to 16 weeks of kind of slow fat loss with a little bit of muscle gain. Basically, you get into a 500 kilocalorie average deficit, um, a little bit less food than you like to eat. Aim for around 10 to 12,000 daily steps. 
and then uh, great things happen. You're still going to gain plenty of muscle, but you're going to lose a lot of fat. And if you have some fat kind of to get off, then your shoulders are going to pop more, your pecs, your back, and you're are going to look absolutely much more like Superman. And on the other hand, if you're on the skinnier side, leaner side of things, you can do, well, 8 to 16 weeks of slow gaining with minimum fat gain. And that's kind of like a 250 calorie daily surplus, just a little bit more food than you normally do. And you're looking to gain about two pounds per month on the gain plan, looking to lose about four pounds per month to know you're on the right track for the for the loss plan. Either way, they kind of bring you towards a very similar look depending on where you start from. So uh, I think that's about it. And if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, we'll see you in the in the comments below. Like, subscribe to YouTube things, and hey, uh, good luck looking more like Superman. And if by some weird coincidence you do the Superman workout on your RPI hypertrophy app around like radiation and you actually inherit Superman's literal powers, uh, be kind. Don't be like Homelander. See you guys next time. Thank you.